What's going on YouTube? We're back at it for another video and today we've got the Grenadier Loadout. A combination I've been working with from the Stratagems as something that would work well in a bunch of different groups but also be something that will hold its own inside of the Helldive difficulty, the highest difficulty, number level 9 out here. And we're jumping in for a two-man and basically we're able to carry as both of us just rocking uh, Basically a railgun and a grenade launcher, so effectively the whole Grenadier loadout is all about a good bit of uh, crowd control and at the same time giving us the capability of still having a little bit of that single target damage. It's the number one things that we'll have to face off with that are going to need that single target damage are the Bile Titans and the Chargers. Both of them are going to have that heavy duty armor on them and the grenade launcher sadly enough won't break through armor but we've got a couple of ways that we can work around this especially when it comes to taking down the bile titans themselves. The rocket pods are going to be an absolute decimator of these guys. They may not be the hardest hitting thing but they give us the capability of taking down these bile titans fairly easily and we do get a couple of them as well as them basically having a little bit of a heat seeking moment. But we've landed on the planet. Fast forward this a little bit so, you know, we didn't get stuck in this moment where we're constantly just having to wait. But immediately we got hit with a stalker. And from this point, we've got to find out where the stalker's lair is. As if you've faced off with them before, there's nothing worse than having that moment where constantly you're having two of these stalkers just run up on you and then give you that tongue lashing to knock you into next week effectively. They have the most ridiculous ragdoll effect whenever they just run up to you and... I've had so many different times inside of hell dive difficulty where they've run up while I'm in the middle of a brug, ugh, brug breach, bug breach. That's effectively just uh, flinging me back into the crowd of bugs that has come up out of the ground and I'm just getting eaten alive. And it's a, whew, it's a nightmare event. It's nothing more frustrating than that moment. But luckily, if you notice where the direction of that stalker came from, generally that is going to be the direction you'll find the stalker's lair, which will look like this anytime that you come around these uh, locations. You'll notice it based on that orange mist that's coming up out of the ground, very similar to the bug nests that were the grub holes that they have inside of, uh, or all across the map, really. And generally, there will be a couple of samples out there, so keep an eye on it. You know, you might want to stay in the area a little bit as... Up the road a little bit, you notice a little bit of a stone structure that's off on its own. Looks a little bit more obscure, almost like a rounded top to it. This is actually going to be where we're going to find the super samples. But over on our left, we do have one of those roaming caravans of bugs. Quickly, immediately just try to uh, basically put an airstrike down right there. As I did see a charger, I wanted to make sure I weakened it. Sadly enough, the airstrikes at this level... Of difficulty are not going to insta kill the chargers but they could possibly kill the rest that were with them and break open a bit of that armor that's one of the biggest things about with the airstrikes or the rocket pods for us is giving us the capability of utilizing either the grenade launcher or our breaker shotgun that full auto and give us the capability of taking them down a whole lot easier but you'll notice right here this structure is where you're going to find those super samples the legendary samples effectively for those ship modules anytime you see one of these stone structures with the white cracks looks almost like what it looks like on the ground is like some what looks like floating mercury that's where you're going to end up finding those so if you're in extreme difficulty or higher you will notice these around the map some at, at random locations, really, you really do have to keep an eye out for that stone structure as there's generally only going to be one, maybe, maybe two. Not always are you going to find a whole lot of these, and sometimes you can literally only find six per match. Like, that's as soon as... But one thing to keep in mind is they will be all at that one location of that uh, stone structure. So you got to keep an eye out for it. You may have to do a little bit of scouring, you know, just constantly looking across the map. But it's going to be well worth it in the end. And a lot of times, you know, once you get really comfortable, extreme difficulty is not going to be uh, anything too hard for you. I mean, it's much easier than hell dive. I'll, I'll admit that. And by the time you've gotten comfortable with hell dive, extreme's going to basically feel like it's medium. It's going to end up happening. You'll just get acclimated to the amount of swarms that may be coming to you, or you may get acclimated to the fact that you may, you know, Pick and choose your fights. Utilize that stealth a bit when you're moving across the map. You don't have to hit every single location and destroy every single bug. 
But when it comes to highlighted areas, you know, your best bet is to immediately try to decimate everything at the location as to try and alleviate your possibilities of a bug breach happening. Sadly enough, when we came over here, double airstriked it and ended up still having some alive. And you'll notice there it goes. One of them just popping off with that orange mist and immediately they've called in a bug breach. This is when we have that swarm moment, but luckily we have the high ground right here. It's one of my, uh, part of my tip guide. Always keep the high ground. This is one of those moments where the grenade launcher really shines as we're able to kind of keep an eye on those locations where the bugs are coming up from. It's going to be multiple breaches here and you'll notice it will move around. So it's one of those times where it's really nice to have that advantage of being able to arc those grenades over and really just catch them as they start coming up from the grub hole. Now, sometimes when we're in like a more of like a plains area, this can be a little bit more problematic. Sometimes you'll have to find a rock or get a different angle. But generally, if you can find high ground, the grenade launcher is going to dominate in these moments and you will be able to clear out those bug breaches pretty quickly. Now, sadly enough, we did have another one of those roaming caravans coming up from behind us. This is just a normal event inside of Helldive. Constantly, there is going to be a little bit of that pressure, but... If you're able to keep on top of that pressure and be able to eviscerate each one of those caravans coming in, especially if you can destroy them before the bug breach events start up, then you will be able to have some of these like calming periods where you can inevitably kind of prolong the period of time where you're not having to deal with bugs at all. There may be some footage out there you may have seen from other people's gameplay where there's uh, they're in hell diving it. It looks like it's in medium. And there's just nothing going on. They're barely facing off with too many enemies. You know, they're, they're basically just taking out a caravan here and there. Same thing can happen with the automatons, but it's a little bit more difficult on that end. But it's all about being able to clear out those packs as quickly as possible before one of them does end up causing that bug breach. And just about any one of the bugs can cause that bug breach. So keep in mind on that one, generally the chargers won't, you know, the bio titans won't. But any of those other lower forms of the bugs, even the one that's, uh, you know, the, the big boy arachnid one, they can call them in and be ready for that. If you see any of them start, you know, wiggling their, uh, their rear or anything or inflating those little ticks, do what you can to immediately just try to take care of that threat as quickly as possible. Like those are the ones that are going to end up causing you the most problems and there are moments where if you leave so many of them alive, you'll notice we just cleared it out. The bug breach detected at the top portion of the screen underneath the compass has disappeared. So we're basically in the clear for this moment. But if we did not continue to destroy them and we allowed them to continue to survive at a certain point, there could be inevitably another prolonging of that breach happening. We could end up either possibly running into another caravan while we're dealing with them behind us and we're constantly being pushed back. And then this new caravan ends up calling in another swarm. And these are the moments that kind of start cascading you into that very real chaos moment where you're getting swarmed from all sides. I mean, those flying bugs are coming in and they're doing their little tongue lashing like the mini stalkers. And it just gets, whew, and it is, uh, it's, it's a time you don't want to have. It can be very frustrating. I will tell you that. And it, ooh, man, you almost bite your tongue in certain moments when they throw you straight to the wolves, bugs in this manner. It gets pretty devastating. But you'll notice just in front of us, we're going to try and utilize some stealth. This is something that can be very helpful. You notice we've got more of those little mini stalker fly in little grasshopper versions that are, ooh, man, they're a real pain. But one of them. Kind of gets, kind of gets the scent a little bit strange. The rest of them keep rolling, but I'm able to kind of maintain my stealth for right now. And then he doesn't even notice me. He just keeps kind of walking on. But buddy over here ends up seeing him. I think he does take him out. I forgot. Yeah, he, he took him out. And then next thing you know, because that one was a part of the entire group, doesn't matter that he's straight away from the group. I think this one's... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they've got some type of bug logic or something. You know, they're connected in some way. Who knows? Maybe that's a part of it. But somehow they all knew that he just got chewed alive or he got put down. Next thing you know, the whole group of them turns around and starts coming for us. Now, thankfully, we were immediately able to 
take out that threat, but then, uh, well, I, would it be real? I don't know what happened. Uh, I don't know why he ended up going all the way over and then uh, started attacking the rest of the group that was on the other side of this wall. But then immediately we're put into another bug breach detected moment. We've got them grouped up. I think had he not pushed on the group that was on the other side of the wall, because these bugs were already pre-existing beforehand. That one wasn't completely eviscerated, but lucky enough, the, the small caravan we had that just passed by over to the right, able to take that one out fairly quickly, but now we're dealing with a whole different ball game. We've got the bloaty bugs that are armored. We've got the chargers that are armored. We've got two of them right now. We're dropping in the uh, rocket pods, kind of weakening those up, giving ourselves the capability of having a good bit more weak spot than just the back end of those chargers. And that way, at the same time, they're weakened up to the point to where even if we use just the main shotgun, we'll still be able to take them down fairly quickly. Sadly enough, though, we're getting those bloaty bugs pushing on us. And, you know, if you've gotten into the harder difficulty and faced off with the, the uh, I don't even know what to call them, the acid bloaty bugs, the bloaty ants, they are the most frustrating thing to deal with considering, you know, you can't headshot them anymore. They're armored all the way up their back. You have to hit them in the weak spot. Even with the grenade launcher, it can be a bit problematic to uh, have to take them down. It may take more than a few of your grenade launcher rounds in order to actually get them to burst. The best bet is to try and aim for the side of them. Lucky enough, we do have blast radius. It does have an area of effect when each one of those grenade launcher rounds lands on the ground. But even then, like if you nail them straight in the front or on the top, it doesn't quite hit those weak spots on the side, so you want to make sure that you kind of land those grenades on the sides of those bloaty bugs. Don't try to hit them straight in the face. Generally not going to be the best damage in that moment. But lucky enough right here, we've had uh, oh, we've had Buddy go down, but we've got the rocket pod. Throw that one in. Instantly it's able to get down that uh, charger right there. Sometimes it will one-shot. The big issue with the rocket pods is because it's four different rockets, and it's not 100% heat-seeking. It's one of those that, within the general radius, that eagle's going to dive and strike the largest, tar uh, largest target near your marker on the ground. But in that moment, if you... Uh, or if they're moving, I should say, and they're moving further away from that marker, they can end up basically only taking two of the rocket pod or even possibly one in certain instances those can be really frustrating but if it takes all four generally that's going to be doing some devastating damage and sometimes one shots the chargers it won't one shot the bile titan with the bile titan you're looking at two of these rocket pods being able to take them out if all four of them do land on the target which isn't always going to be the case but lucky enough we do break the armor every time the rocket pods do come in and land on the target. And in that moment, we've got the capability of starting to deal some massive damage with our grenade launcher. Now we've got another one of those moments where we're just dealing with the, the bug breach. We're finishing off everything that's uh, popped up out of the ground. We've got another one of those bloaty bugs at the other end. You know, they're shooting off their little rockets. That Those are very devastating, I will say. Uh, do keep an eye out on where the arcs for those green blasts are going because uh, whew, man you get a couple of those to the face and it's over buddy i tell you what we'll see it coming up in the gameplay footage too it's it's not a good day but right here we're just kind of clearing things up we've got a couple more of those little grasshoppers oh grasshopper stalkers man i um these are not my favorite i, I really hate these you know the ticks are fine Poison ticks aren't fine. They, they slow you, and it's really frustrating. Man, I hate them. But these, these are the worst. A little hopping around, have a little bit of that weird kind of, I know you're aiming at me, start dancing left and right, and then when they get on top of you, man, oh, God. That moment when they strike you and they throw your aim off. And I'm all down for uh, the game being a little bit different, giving you, uh, you know, that moment where it's like, oh, that bug hit me, and next thing you know, you, my whole aim's thrown off and all of that. But there's some other moments when I'm like, man, forget this realism. Uh, you know, I just want to be able to just blast this thing to bits. Like, dodge, dive, like there's no tomorrow, just get me out. 
Now we did have one of those moments where, you know, our legendary nodes were up underneath one of the bugs that died right there. That is one of the frustrating parts with the game is that we can't really move some of those bodies. You know, if you had a bile titan that landed on you and then died right there and then you've got some of your samples up under near, you sometimes just have to wait it out until the body despawns can be pretty irritating at times but lucky enough it does despawn over a little bit of time you may just have to end up waiting nothing worse than that moment when it's at the very end of a match if you're running out of time but don't worry you should be able to uh, work your way around it at some point but from this point we're gonna head up on over to the artillery over here on the left had a little bit of a moment where I thought this match we were just going to do main objective, but you really can't go wrong with doing some of these uh, artillery turret ones where you just pick up some of these shells. Now, if you don't know how to do this pretty quickly, is you grab one up. Don't grab the yellow ones generally. That one's just a, a smoke. I would say uh, your better bet is to find whatever ones have the red tip to them. Not the one that's the pointy red tip. That one's going to be napalm, but... Every time that you look at one of those shells, it will tell you what the shell is, specifically what it's going to do or what its effect will be. So do kind of look around, and there's that moment right there. I didn't check where the arcs were going. I was stuck looking at the little grasshoppers, and immediately all of them just dove right on top of me. Instant kill. Extremely frustrating. But with the artillery side objectives, you really can't go wrong with utilizing this. Some of them have mini nukes as an artillery shell which can be really useful in certain instances, but at the same time, it just gives you another one of those ordnance that you can drop in while something, uh, or while the rest of what you have could be on cooldown. One of the more frustrating moments, I mean, that looked like it nailed him straight in the head. I feel like that Bile Titan should have just immediately went down, but lucky enough, you do have the capability with the Railgun to one-tap those Bile Titans, so if you got a buddy with you, that's all about utilizing some like highly... Maybe maybe the best way to put it is if you got a buddy that's good at aiming and knows how to hold the trigger down until something's fully charged and then hit them in the mouth, that's going to be great for them. But if you're the person that's more about clearing the crowd, here's going to be the one for you. Don't, don't think for a second that I don't have good aim, all right? Let's just slow that thought process down before you start thinking, oh, Reaper's over here just doing the Grenadier class because he can't shoot a railgun to the face, oh, buddy. I learned how it one-shot the Bile Titans for myself. Need to just step on back. Come back and watch the footage. I'll be doing the railgun in the coming future along with some sentry builds. But I'm moving back over to grab my supply pack and grab up my grenade launcher. And then we start tossing these uh, artillery shells in. Ah, oh, yes, I was talking about how you move quickly with this thing. Effectively, you just switch weapons, grab it up, switch weapons again. Sometimes you can toss it. By doing that, it almost looks like you kick it into the air. And then we got another one of those bloaty bugs over here just left over. This is how much health they have. It's, oh, whew, man. And this is me hitting them in the weak spot. I mean, that's, that's crazy. It takes three magazines for that little Uzi to get it done. Unbelievable. But then we do end up having quite a bit of bugs just come out of nowhere. A lot of those little grasshoppers. Nothing more frustrating than this. I can't stand it myself. And the, for whatever reason, this is something that I've noticed multiple times with these little concrete barriers around each one of these little artillery things there. The small bugs seem to like kind of clip into the space around that. You know, I've seen some people talking about a lot of bugs, which funny enough, here we go. We had buddy ended up uh, actually DCing in this moment. But we he was able to get right back in, thankfully enough, but... I guess one of those funny moments where, you know, there's a couple of bugs here and there that we do have to end up dealing with. Thankfully, we had another caravan. I took them out as quickly as possible. We didn't have any bug breach. Smooth sailing at this point, and then just waiting on D2 to come back in. Draslin. But then we're able to just start our way for journey. But for whatever reason around those concrete structures, that's what I was talking about. They just seem to clip inside of it, and you can't shoot them if they're directly inside of it. It's much worse when you have those uh, those poison spitters. But thankfully, there's, there's not like a, a crazy amount of bugs, even though there's probably going to be somebody in the comments that will just start going off and rattling about how they fell through the map, or they fell through this, or fell through that. 
I mean, honestly, let's just, you know, let's let's remind them what the bugs are. Put it in the uh, little box. They're working on it, all right? You know, the, I'd say 99% of the game is fun. That's the best part about this game. It's not feeling like I'm, you know, paying a lot of money for a completely unfinished game. At this point, like, I'm just like, man, there's a couple of quality assurance things that could be, uh, could be fixed. You know, these are some pretty massive maps. We've got a whole lot of planets to go through. We haven't even seen all of them just yet. I mean, we're still pushing through the Galactic War campaign. But you'll notice right here, we're kind of like moving through all of these different groups of bugs. This is the ultimate use of stealth right here. We just picked up that little SSD that we got to carry over here for our main objective. One thing to keep in mind, you know, stealth can really make your life a lot easier in harder difficulties if you maintain avoiding the large packs of bugs and just kind of avoiding conflict in certain instances picking and choosing your fights based on what you need to have and then what you can avoid is really going to benefit you in the long run considering not only is it going to save the possibility of time but it's going to save ammunition health and the possibility of just being stuck in this chaos loop where you just end up just constantly churning through pack after pack after pack, which you're going to end up having anyways at some of these main objectives. So saving those moments for when you have the capable point to position yourself and kind of set up the scene for what you need to deal with, it's going to end up paying off in the long run. But yet again, we've got another one of those bug breaches. Grenade launcher is coming in handy. This is more of one of those planes moments where a bit of a flat ground over here, and I'm, and I'm telling you, I'm getting spit on by that tick, and it's just slowing me down. And I thought Lyme disease was bad. This is worse. Much worse. Goodness. But then we've got another one of those bio titans. He starts vomiting. Vomiting on uh, bio titans can be... It's strange at certain moments. Sometimes it feels as though uh, it's working against me, but you'll notice in that moment that rocket pod is able to take him out after he'd taken a few shots from the railgun. Let's, let's make sure we let it be known. Railgun was striking him before the rocket pods landed on top of him. So that's, that's the power of the rocket pod. You know, at the hardest difficulty, sometimes it really is all about the combination of the skills or stratagems of each one of the players working in tandem with each other. You're not always going to have something that's going to be an immediate one shot. Sure, 500 kg from the Eagle is going to be something that can decimate one of those bio titans, but that's if you're able to actually land the marker on them. They're going to stand still and then wait for it. A lot of times the reason I go with the rocket pods is simply because I can almost guarantee it's going to nail the target each time. It's not one of those, okay, maybe I might get this one. And then if it does miss, it's not going to be the worst. Or, you know, I'm not stuck in that moment where, well, I don't have anything to take this thing down anymore. It's me relying fully on my teammate with a rail gun or something else. And what if they're not there? What if I don't have a teammate with a railgun? What if they died, they came back, they can't even get to their railgun? Everything's on cooldown. I need something pretty quickly available to me. And with the rocket pods, the big thing is really that we're giving everybody the opportunity to basically take down this Bile Titan. Even if they don't have any type of stratagem available to them, they can actually utilize their main weapons as the number one thing with the rocket pod is as soon as it hits on top, it exposes or it breaks into that armor and exposes a weak spot for everybody to be able to hit. So even if you've got grenades, there's no impact grenades, grenade launcher. If you've got any regular weapon, even, even the pistol in this moment has the capability of dealing more damage than it would have if we were just hitting the undercarriage of this thing. And if you've had this moment before, you'll, you'll notice it does quite well. Now, for whatever reason, like this, this Bile Titan seems to be just like eating it all right now. I don't think every one of my rocket pods hit him. You can definitely see it's just that right side. And in that moment, do keep in mind, even with the grenade launcher, if I was just hitting him directly in the face, right on top of the armor, that's not going to do very much damage. It has a little bit of penetration power, but it basically that armor is absorbing a 
big chunk of the actual damage that's being dealt from that grenade launcher. So in those moments when you do see that Bile Titan with the exposed weak spot like that, make sure you are hitting it in the weak spot. You do come back down, exact some revenge, but then sadly enough, thrown straight into uh, some puke and then uh, apparently the Bile Titan's leg just landed right on top of me. Sadly enough, that's not the only moment that that Bile Titan ends up kicking me with its legs. But we'll uh, see that coming up in the future. But I'm telling you right now, we, uh, we have one of those miscommunication moments right here where this is kind of a little bit of chaos that I should have not allowed to happen. Right now, Buddy's doing uh, the work that he should be doing. He's trying to rearrange or reposition that satellite. I'm focused too much on it, waiting for it when I should just be listening for the chime that comes with it being in that one little, I guess, uh, acute angle right there to where that thing's ready or signal transferable, whatever, whatever you'd like to call it. But in that moment, I effectively just allowed everything to dogpile on top of me. I allowed myself to get killed right there. You know, one, one of the number one things is to basically stay focused at all times, especially when we're in an operation where, sure, two of our... You know, we're, we're a two-man right now on the hardest difficulty, and I ended up uh, getting a little bit overzealous with the airstrike right here. Let's not talk about how danger close that was. Uh, it's definitely going to die anyways. It's not because of the airstrike. But, um... <laughs> effectively, uh, it's one of those moments where, you know, I shouldn't have been so focused on that screen in that moment. I should have just been... Uh, letting him know as soon as I heard the chime while I was taking out the enemies around me. He may have been in the clear up top there, but I allowed myself to get overrun right there. It would have been obviously a little bit easier had we had two other players that could have been basically working the crowd at the same point. That definitely would have been a very easy time right here. You can tell it's one of those moments where if you have four players inside of hell dive difficulty and you're getting overwhelmed it's generally because there's more than a few mistakes actually being made than uh it actually ended up being entirely the difficulty itself now there are some moments where yeah the difficulty does ramp up you get a couple of those bug breaches you get a bad drop at the very beginning oh man before you can even get anything out or get positioned those instances can be Whoa, really hard to come back from. You can come back from it, but it can be a, it can be a reinforcement drop excursion right there that will continue to keep looping. But, but now I take the better position, which is we know there's a bug breach going on right now. I get up to that higher position where the satellite dish is. You know, everything's aligned over there. I've hit the button. It's basically doing its little upload sequence, and now. I'm taking that high ground position and I'm utilizing that grenade launcher to basically keep all those bugs at a distance right here. This is the main power play of the build itself. You know, I could be dropping some of those airstrikes in. I could be just trying to utilize the rocket pods to maybe clear out a couple of packs over here as I do know there's a couple of those bloaty bugs on the other side of where that terminal is that I can't really get with the grenade launcher. But at the same time, I'm able to refill each one of my supply packs, you know, I basically trued through a good bit of grenade launcher rounds, but we've got plenty of resupply available for us. You know, I'm able to drop in another one of those supply packs and we have utilized pretty much uh, every pack that we've needed to. And this is one of those moments where you can kind of get the angle, sadly enough, constantly stuck on reload pretty much with every weapon can be a bit frustrating. And you'll notice... I am hitting them in the sides right there, and that's giving me that two-shot capability most of the time with those armored bloaty bugs, which can be really effective when you have them in a good pack. You know, they, There's nothing worse than seeing four of those bloaty bugs just crawling up on you or seeing it crawling up on one of your buddies. Trying to avoid all that vomit that's possibly coming from you in that moment is, whew, it's, it's not a fun one. So each one of them's got a different spray and arc. Each one of them's going off at a different time. And if you run out of that stamina in that moment, oh man, get ready to get melted. Now we finished up the main objective and now we've got that clear sailing skies heading out for that extract. Now we have eaten up a lot of the time out of this mission. And a couple of those moments could, you know, basically be attributed to 
a little bit of fumbling here, a little bit of uh, the way that we moved before, some of the bug breaches. You're going to have to uh, accommodate for some of these times. If you have a full four man, it's probably going to be a whole lot smoother of an experience. You'll be able to actually bum rush through. You, you might be able to fully take on pretty much every aspect of the map, but that's if you're working as like a well-oiled machine and being able to clear each one of them, utilizing each other's stratagems in perfect coordination, not wasting things, and not having a whole lot of surprises. Like some of these stalkers coming up here in a moment. Thankfully, we had two of these just show up, and I was able to clear them out pretty quickly. We didn't end up actually going for the stalker's lair. I immediately just started taking care of the threat in front of us. I'd already called in the extraction. At this point, it's all about just maintaining this high ground and maintaining the bug breaches that are opening up just below us right now i'm basically just dropping in everything that we could possibly need i'm having another grenade launcher dropped in that way i can just pick that up have one that's fully loaded available for me i'm also dropping in another one of the supply packs you know, i've only got two on my back right now and in this moment i'm really just kind of like chewing through that grenade launcher's ammunition Right now, we're utilizing this to the fullest. You know, we're not going to use it past this point, so we might as well just put everything downrange and become the true grenadier. Now, from this high ground position, we're able to just kind of maintain crowd control. We're not letting these bugs get close in any way, shape, or form. Now, obviously, we can't hold all sides at all times, and you will notice that Boom, I was able to go and grab that. We've got that one grenade launcher fully loaded. No worries at all. Throwing in one of those rocket pods. And then we do end up having a little bit of a breach moment. But he didn't have, you know, the capability of maintaining as strong a crowd control. You know, even if you're, if you're rocking just a shotgun. Oh, there it is. There's that leg that finally kicked me from that pile of titan. Oh, man, there's nothing more frustrating than that. There is another stalker that did show up, but thankfully they only show up one at a time, and we don't have too much time over here. But even with just the primary weapons, you're not always going to have as strong a crowd control that can be basically like two people at once maintaining one side of this. Had we had two other players, you know, it, it could have been one of those moments where I had the whole left side to myself, and the three of them made it even easier on their side. Having two people can really be the difference, but you by yourself with assault rifle or even just that breaker shotgun, it can just be an absolute nightmare to just try and maintain certain sides, especially if there is a ton of those little grasshoppers and then you got a couple of them or a couple of those armored ones pushing up alongside them. You know, you're going to be running through ammo, stuck on reload, that thing's pushing you. It gets to be an absolute nightmare. But with the Grenadier class... You know, we have moments where we're stuck on reload, but we're able to keep everything at a distance. We're able to dish out that AOE damage and we're able to just clear those bug breaches as they come in and really maintain control of those crowds that are coming in. Those bugs, they just get squashed. We put them under our boot and we crunch it. But that's going to be the Grenadier build right there. You know, I'm using the Breaker Shotgun, the Uzi, and the Impact Grenade with this. You really can't go wrong with that combination. When it comes to your main weapon, whatever, use whatever is you're comfortable with, whatever fits your playstyle. Don't even really worry about that one. And when it comes to the airstrike, the rocket pods, I would say, are a really good benefit. But the grenade launcher and the supply pack, hugely something I would solidify every single time. The airstrike is more to combine with the efforts of the grenade launcher. It gives me the capability of the rocket pod to get a little bit of that weak spot opening up on certain enemies and at the same time it has that aoe effect it's just a good carpet down or carpet bombing and at the same time i've fully upgraded my hangar so it's one of those moments where utilizing the eagle really benefits me but if you're somebody that's playing with sentries you could definitely slot that in with the grenade launcher the grenade launcher is the main focus of this whole build and putting that with the supply pack is huge and then beyond that point mixing it with some things that could benefit the team or depending on, you know, maybe you have somebody else that's running that eagle fully stacked with their stratagems and maybe you have some of those ship modules that are opening up your capabilities for sentry turrets or any of those things that could benefit the rest of the team. Honestly, those two other slots can be very interchangeable. This is just something that worked out really well for me and I'd argue you could 
play around with a few different loadouts when it comes to combining that with the grenade launcher and the supply pack, but they are really that main duo when it comes to facing off with the bugs specifically. Now, when it comes to the automatons, I do kind of have to play around with this build a little bit more. It's almost like a different game playing on that side of things, but we'll have, we'll have that coming in the future in a different video, but hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully this might've helped you out. Maybe some additional tips that give you the capability, maybe a little bit more of that courage to push into those higher difficulties and maybe even just do it with a couple of your buddies, not having to have that full four man team. Even though there's a lot of people out there right now that, you know, if you hit quick play, inside of Helldive on the bug side of things. They are just doing that one mission over and over, just trying to farm samples, and it is... I feel like it's bugged. It's, But it's the slowest, most irritating mission out of the entire game, and there's just nothing worse than that moment trying to grab a four-man group or a Helldive excursion, trying to, you know, legitimately play around with some different builds with the stratagems, and you're just stuck basing off with the same old boring mission because people just want to... Farm out some samples, I guess. But all right, guys, that's going to be it. It's a pretty long video in the first place. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you like this content, you know, let me know down in the comments below if you want to see more of this style of content where I'm just kind of like voiceovering some of the gameplay, talking about the build that I'm running with, and just giving some general tips as we go through. Let me know if you enjoyed it. If there's something you would like to see more of in the future, but at the same time, hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of this content. And if you'd like to see any of this content live, hit that link down in the description. Follow me over at Twitch. We're live daily, running it up on Hell Divers 2 for pretty much the remainder of the month, if I will say so. Uh, might do some Skull and Bones, but I won't do it primarily as much as I'm doing Hell Divers and maybe that Nightingale game coming up at the end of February. But we've got a whole lot to cover when it comes down to and hell divers and there's a whole lot of things to work with a whole lot of different builds so be on the lookout but on that note hopefully you enjoyed and have a good one